God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll begin study in the 15th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. God bless each of you. I am so glad that you're logging on. Thank God for that wonderful thumbs up that I'm getting from so many of you uh, on the internet. Thank God for our Facebook friends, our Twitter friends, and also our MySpace friends, and uh, our friends at LinkedIn. Uh, we have friends, uh, uh, well, in many places on the internet. We are on one called Stumble the Phone, and people just happen upon us. I want you to know that I am so happy for you, and I am glad that you're taking up your valuable time to let me know that you are watching. I also received uh, uh, inquiries on my uh, website. I want you to know I appreciate those. I would that you leave me your name or and your email address so that I can get back with you, if nothing else, just to say that thank you, that I thank you for watching this ministry. I love you with the love of the Lord, and keep Keep on sending me uh, news that you are watching. Shall we go to the Bible? We're going to begin reading verse 1, chapter 15, the book of 1 Corinthians. The Bible reads, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, in which, and in which ye stand. We have to know what the gospel is. The gospel is good news and glad tidings. Apostle Paul said, I preached it unto you and you received it uh, and you stand on that gospel. Verse 2 reads, by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I, uh, I preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain. Uh, keep in memory what I preached unto you. Uh, you know the, the word of God is going out uh, is going out now over the internet. You're hearing me. Uh, via the internet. Uh, it's also going out over the television, going out over radio, going out over many mediums. And, and I want you to know, uh, well, it's even at your local churches, uh, churches throughout your communities, worldwide, all over the world, uh, there's a church open and the Word of God is going forth. Uh, you can hear it on Sunday morning, go back and hear it on Wednesday, and then go home and turn on your TV and hear it. Uh, and then click on the internet and hear it. So, so the Word of God is going Going out, uh, going out. Uh, but you have to keep in memory what you hear. Uh, if it goes, my mother used to say, don't let things go in one ear and right out of the other. Uh, you want to hear it and take it in. Uh, keep in memory uh, the things that you learn. Uh, Apostle Paul said, keep in memory what I preached unto you, lest ye have believed in vain. Uh, what is he saying? Uh, if you hear it and, and don't, uh, don't remember it or, or forget about it or just put it on the shelf somewhere, where and don't keep it in practice and don't even don't even uh, 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 live the life daily or recognize our Lord daily. Uh, all of it is in vain. So Apostle Paul says, don't get in that condition. Um, verse three: For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, uh, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. Uh, I delivered unto you. Uh, uh, you know, you got to understand what I preach. God had to give it to me first. Uh, before I can give it to you, it has to come to me, uh, has to come in my mind and in my intellect, in my psyche, uh, so that I can impart it to you. Uh, so Apostle Paul said, I'm, I've given you what God has given me, uh, I, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, uh, according to the scripture, uh, not just words coming out of our mouth or something we concocted together or, or learned, but words coming from from the scripture. Uh, everything that we preach and everything that we say should be able to be bared up by, by the scripture. Uh, Old and New Testament. Uh, if we preach to, to you things uh, that, that really we couldn't substantiate in the Bible, uh, our teaching is in vain. Uh, in vain. Why? Because it stands out there alone. Uh, what we teach you, what we preach to you, we should also always, always uh, be able to find what we preach uh, and prove what we say by the word of God. Uh, verse four reads, and that he was, uh, and that he was buried. We're talking about Jesus, uh, the Christ uh, was buried, uh, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scripture. Uh, believe me, that's the gospel. Uh, you have to believe that Jesus died for your sins. Uh, you have to believe that. Uh, he was buried and then rose again from the dead for your sins. Uh, if thou can 
uh, if thou wilt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus uh, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, this is a this is a essential, essential for you being saved. Uh, you need to know and you need to believe that Christ died and rose the third day according to Scripture. Uh, to the scripture, what the Bible said, uh, verse 3, and that he was seen of, of Cephas, then of the twelve. Uh, these men saw him. They saw him with their eyes. Uh, verse 6, after that he was seen of above 500 brethren uh, at once, uh, of whom the greater part remain unto this present time, uh, but some have fallen asleep. Uh, well, Apostle Paul wrote this book around AD 56, uh, and uh, so he letting them know that many of them that saw our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, saw him after he, he had been ripped, rose uh, after he rose from the dead, uh, saw him with their eyes, uh, eyewitnesses of, of the fact that, that he lived. Uh, after they saw him on the cross die, you got to understand these men saw him, and at the writing of this book in AD 56, they were yet alive. Uh, if anybody had uh, uh, had any doubts, all they had to go is do all they had to do was go and talk to a true eyewitness uh, of those that had seen our Lord, uh, seen him whipped up Calvary Hill, uh, and then saw uh, that he died, and then saw that they buried him in a tomb, uh, and then saw him after he rose again uh, from the dead. Uh, there were eyewitnesses at this at this time. Uh, it wasn't just something someone had concocted together. These men, uh, well, number one, the, the the apostles, they all saw him, uh, and then. 500 people uh, that were accredited Christians that that uh, walked uh, as Christians they saw it with their own eyes uh, and those folks were yet alive uh, that saw him with their own eyes now let me tell you something you might get you might get uh, one two people to lie with you if you're telling a lie you might get up to 10 maybe even 20 but you are not gonna get 500 folks to get all get together and and, and get in cahoots with you with a lie well let me let you know these men were eyewitnesses. They saw it uh, with their own eyes. Verse 7 reads, uh, after that he was seen in James, uh, seen of James, uh, then of the apostles, uh, and last of all he was seen uh, of me. Uh, Apostle Paul said, I saw him. I saw him uh, as uh, of one born out of due time. Uh, keep keep in mind that Apostle Paul, when Jesus uh, was uh, walking this earth, uh, he was just a small young young fellow, uh, a young lad running around. Uh, he was born out of due, due time. Uh, number one, born again, uh, even after Jesus had uh, had went to the cross. Uh, you, well, we, Paul's going to give you his testimony as we continue reading. In verse 9, for I am the least of the apostles uh, that am not fit to be called an apostle uh, because I persecuted the church of God. Well, let me let you know, Apostle Paul was harder on himself uh, than, than uh, uh, other people are. Uh, he said, I'm not even fit to be called an apostle. Uh, why? Because his testimony, he, he persecuted uh, the church. Uh, he persecuted the people of God. Uh, you know yourself, when he was on in, en route to Damascus, he had a letter in his hand uh, that anyone called, uh, that would call on the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus, uh, anyone professing to be a uh, Christian, uh, he could have them locked up, have them bound. Uh, he's that same one that held the coats when, when they stoned, De uh, stoned uh, Stephen to death. Uh, well, uh, get this picture. Apostle Paul said, I am not even fit to be called an apostle uh, because I persecuted the church of God. And he did. Uh, but, that, but you know what? That, that same church uh, that he persecuted, uh, they received him uh, after they got the news. That, that Saul had been born again. Uh, and that lets you know that, that God can save anyone. Uh, God can deliver anyone. All they have to do is say yes to his will. Uh, well, shall we read in verse 10? But by the grace of God, uh, I am what I am. Uh, and his grace, uh, which was bestowed upon me, uh, was not in vain. Uh, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Uh, uh, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Uh, apostle Paul said it. Uh, I'm not worthy to be called an apostle, uh, but you know what? Uh, I am what I am. Uh, God saved me, and I labored more than all of them. 
after God did a work in me, uh, after God changed my heart, uh, you got to understand, all of us got some past. Uh, don't you fool yourself. Some of us got some pretty squeaky past. Uh, but God is able to take that past uh, and wash your sins away uh, and then set you on a road to where you can do a work for him. If he's done it for Apostle Paul, he can do it for you. Let me let you know this. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. Uh, well, he can save anyone. Uh, well, uh, let me just read that to you. Uh, verse 10, but by the grace of God, uh, I am what I am. Uh, and his grace, which is bestowed upon me, uh, was not, not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Uh, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Uh, shall we read verse 11? Um, Therefore, uh, whether it were I or they, uh, so we preached, uh, and so we believed. Uh, you got to understand, though, the, the power of God had Paul, uh, and he was able to go places where the others did not go. Uh, no, we never take from the work uh, uh, that the other apostles did. They played an important role uh, in the work of God. Uh, but you have to understand the energy that Paul had uh, when God saved him. Uh, that same energy that he used to persecute the, ch the church, uh, to persecute the people of God. Uh, he started using it uh, for the kingdom of God. Uh, and don't you know because of what he did, uh, of what God had did through him, uh, by his grace, uh, don't you know more people came to Jesus? Uh, the way to the Gentiles was open. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, the way to the Gentile was open. Uh, that opened up the door for you and opened up the door for me. Uh, open up the door for most of us uh, to come to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, well, uh, shall we read verse 12? Uh, now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, uh, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Now, can't you see uh, Apostle Paul had to straighten out a mess in Corinth? Uh, he had to straighten out a mess. Don't you know, even in the day that we live, we have a mess uh, because we got pastors that don't believe that that Jesus was born of a virgin and they're mounting somebody's pulpit every day, I'm going to tell you what really what I think. Uh, if you don't believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, if you didn't believe he died and rose again on the third day, you have no business uh, behind anybody's pulpit. Get on out of it. I don't care if you got 5,000 members or 100,000 members. Uh, if you're not preaching the truth, if you're not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm talking about the death, burial, and resurrection if you don't believe he was born of a virgin, you don't need to be behind the pulpit. I can't say that loud enough. Get out of that large church. I'll take it and preach the gospel to those people. Come on here now. Come out of here, devil. I know you felt that one. Verse 13, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. Listen to what you teach people. You got to go by the scripture. You got to go by what thus saith the Lord. If you not preaching the gospel, if you're not telling people about Jesus and what he did for us, all of your preaching is in vain. Well, let's read on. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain. Our, our preaching vain. And your faith is also vain. Even your faith is for nothing. If we don't believe in the resurrection, if we don't believe that Jesus was was raised from the dead, then your preaching is in vain, and then uh, your, your belief in Christ, your faith, uh, is in vain. Uh, shall we read verse 15? I'm going to read a few more verses, and then we will conclude for this day. Uh, yea, uh, and we are found false witnesses of God, if there was no resurrection, uh, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, uh, who is raised not... Uh, uh, so, uh, whom he raised not up. Now, if he wasn't raised up, you got to get the mentality of what Paul is saying. If so be that the, the dead rise not, all of our preaching is in vain. That's what he's telling us. I'll reread verse 15 for clarification. Uh, Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. Uh, if what you say is true, uh, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if that's 
what you say. If what you say is true, if so be that the dead rise not. Shall we continue reading? Verse 16. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. Remember what you're teaching. Keep in mind what you're teaching. If it don't bear witness with the resurrection of Christ, then you got a problem. You are teaching the wrong thing. Verse 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sin. Get that. If Christ was not raised from the dead, you're yet in your sins. You haven't been delivered. You haven't been saved. So you got to know that Christ was raised from the dead in order to know that you are saved from your sin. Shall we read verse 18? Then they who uh, they also who are false witnesses uh, are falling asleep. Let me read it. Uh, then they uh, also who are falling asleep in Christ are perished. Uh, the ones that are already dead that profess Christ, uh, if there was no resurrection of the dead, uh, those folks perished. What do you mean? They went to hell. Uh, well, uh, let me continue reading. Um, if in this life only we have Hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. Let me read it again. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. Well, Apostle Paul was rebuking them because some were saying that there was no resurrection. Apostle Paul had to deal with them. You preaching Christ and, 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 and have that theology? What is wrong with you? Don't you know if we don't have that hope that Christ died and rose again, all of us are most miserable. Why? Because all of us are going to perish. All of us are going to go to hell. Well, I'm going to open this up further in our next session. We'll start uh, uh, verse 20 in our next session. This is important. Watch what you teach people. Make sure it bears up with the scripture. You have to believe that Jesus died for your sins. That yes, they laid him in the tomb. Yes, he was he was laid there, and on the third day he was resurrected from the dead. You have to believe that in order to be saved. Get that over to everybody in the world. They need Jesus, and they have to believe in the resurrection if they want to be saved. I want you to know that I love you, my dears. I love you with the love of the Lord. If you would like to contact me for any reason, you can reach me at the Word with Chester Ministries, Post Office Box 200483, San Antonio, Texas, 78220. You can also reach me at my website, www.poemsbychester.com. Remember, I love you, my friends. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.